Yeah, hi folks. Now, today's video was supposed to be entirely about Gavin Iron, the corrupt CEO of the Waikato District Council, who cancelled Julian Batchelor's second stop co-governance uh, event near Hamilton, even though the first one went smoothly. Now, that cancellation was clearly politically motivated to appease Maori elites who are influencing councils right across New Zealand. But not so according to Michael Laws, the so-called free speech advocate for the platform, who went out of his way to silence Julian, especially in the latter part of an interview the other day. And Sean Plunkett has also done similar. And the meeting was to start at 3 and everything was going well. This room started to fill at 2.30 and we had all the tables out and everything all set up and ready to go. And the room was pretty much full by, by 3 o'clock. And then suddenly at the, at the back of the meeting, uh, about 50 Maori came in with uh, banners and placards and, you know, what have you. And uh, they started shouting and screaming. And then a guy came up the middle of the aisle, you know, between the, because we have an aisle dividing the room into two, going up the middle, as you usually do, like a church. And uh, he was coming up the, the up the middle, sort of like a uh, you know a guy at the All Blacks doing a haka and and uh, rolling his eyes and poking his tongue out and shouting and screaming. And so um, uh, yeah, we had to deal with that. And then everybody in the other uh, group of Maori at the back were screaming and shouting, and some of them came to the side. Were they all and Maori, Julian, or, or were some of them? No, no, no. There was there was there was probably about I don't know. There was a few few Europeans in there, but you know what? To be honest, you can't tell who's married and who's not now because everybody says... No, OK, married. so there are They're a group of... What, 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 one, oh, I mean, Julian, I'm just going to suggest, with the greatest respect, maybe it's the, the protest. Why don't we could just call them the protest? Just call them the protesters. And then the colour of their skin or their ethnicity doesn't matter. But it does matter because co-governance is all about Maori. They're involved. Now that is censorship right there. Now to Michael Laws. Right. You are also the director of Evangelical Strategies International, according to your LinkedIn profile as well. Is that right? Now, that is a dog whistle to the left who hate Christianity. What has religion got to do with co-governance? Absolutely nothing. Yeah, that's correct, yep. Okay. So, um, and I'm really interested if there's a combina if there's a correlation between the two, or in your view, they are distinct. That co-governance and um, your passion for evangelism, for Christian evangelism, uh, or you've just, some of the tactics that you use, you know, the way in which you approach topics, the way in which you frame them from evangelism you've used for co-governance, are they related at all? I, I've never made that connection at all, except that um, I think co-governance is very wrong. And from a from a Christian point of view, anything that's wrong needs to be fought against, especially when it affects a lot of people. Because it's you know, the, if if you, I've tried to keep my Christianity out of this campaign um, because you know some people are very very anti-Christianity, and so I want to you know keep firmly and focused on the aspect of co-governance. Co but I think where a lot of people are being affected negatively, and they're going to be affected even more negatively in the future, uh, all of us, whether you're a Christian, a Muslim, or a Hindu, or, or an atheist, or whoever you are, you you should be standing up to stop this for the for the sake of the, of the good of the country. Okay, now, um, you're doing, as I said uh, in my introduction to this, it's ironic because, uh, listen, I'm not being nasty to you, but I'm being honest. I don't think you would have got too much mm. coverage of your speaking tour unless you'd paid for it yourself uh, if it wasn't for the counter-protesters. They've done you a bit of a favour, haven't they? Well, they have because they, they're they sort of like bait for the media because they, they come out and create a great ruckus at our, at our meetings, although they've stopped doing it because we've made all the meetings private now, so they've, they've dwindled down to only one or two turning up and sometimes none turning up whatsoever. Um 
So yeah, definitely. The um, in, in the early stages, they created a media sensation by turning up. So we were very thankful for that, and um, I can't believe the media hasn't got onto that already. And I wouldn't say that it's just because of the protesters that we've got coverage, because we've printed a quarter of a million of those little booklets that I we produced, and uh, they're going out all over the country, and um, it's going like gangbusters. That's in ten weeks, a quarter of a million booklets have gone out, and there's people all over the country. Um, who are delivering them into letterboxes. Rural Mail is doing all the, the, the farmers um, around New Zealand, and the support has been absolutely enormous. Um, but you're also getting cancelled. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it's a fair debate um, with you, and I don't care which um, side people are on on the co-governance debate, as long as there is a rational debate and discussion, and people can share those ideas and the best argument wins, as far as I'm concerned. But in this case, mm. you are having a large number of your venues closed down before that debate or discussion happens. Um, who's closing them down? Is it local councils? Is it private organisations? Is it government authorities? What? Who? No, it's always it's always people inside the council, council employees. There is like an iwi mafia at work in New Zealand. Now, I would never have said that a year ago, but having, you know, worked now with what I'm doing and running this tour, we're brushing with councils on a very intimate level and finding out just how much corruption there is. I mean, um, the, the Auckland uh, councillor Weiss, uh, Claudia Weiss, she set that up for a cancellation. She set, she arranged two meetings, one after the other, with with activists. We, we were supposed to finish at nine. She had activists in there at nine. Um, so booking one after the other and said, oh, no, it's too dangerous. Uh, she told us last minute she lied on News Talk ZB to uh, Duplessy Allen about that, saying they'd had lots of communication with us. They had not. They communicated with us the last minute on Friday. Hamilton has just done the same. There's a guy there called Gavin Iron, who's the CEO of the Waikato District Council. He now, this is Gavin Iron. And the bone hanging from his neck is all you need to know about this guy. The bone with all the Maori carvings on it. This guy is as woke as they come. He did exactly the same thing. They have a little strategy, but they all work together. Cancel last minute, come up with ridiculous um, self, uh, health and safety regulations, and then uh, make it impossible to have the meeting. And so, you know, Gavin Iron, for example, at Hamilton, said, oh, you know, there could be the danger of guns and knives and, and you know, or, that's what he actually said. Guns and knives and, and, and objects being thrown. And here it is. From our risk assessment, we have identified the potential for the following risks as a result of this event. The use of weapons, e.g. guns, knives or any suitable available materials. Objects being thrown. Violence threatening or abusive language, a, pedest a pedestrian being hit by a, a motor vehicle, crushing in the crowd. Oh, wow. The guy is a complete woke nutter. Well, we've had 12 meetings now and not one person's been injured, Not one, nothing's been thrown, no guns, no knives. And... Um, it's been fantastic. And if it wasn't for the protesters, we'd have absolutely safe, amazing um, uh, meetings everywhere. So, the yeah, so that's the, the, the irony. Yeah, that's, that's the, the irony, isn't it? Uh, yeah, so that's the irony, that, that you're having... The, the violence that is caused is not caused by you holding the meeting or by the people who are attending your meetings. It's caused by the people who are turning up who want to disrupt them and inhibit your freedom of speech, Yeah. Exactly. That's it. It's a, it's a double-edged sword. So they bring the media, but they also disrupt the meetings. Uh, by, by, and, the, and the council and the media, particularly TV3, TV1, they and, and New Zealand Herald and stuff, they're all under the spell of the $55 million public interest journalism fund, and thankfully you're not. You wouldn't know it sometimes. And the platform. Um, and so they are paid to paint a terrible picture of stock co-governance and of me, and put the public off coming. But we just had a meeting in Tauranga where it was standing room only. We're just getting such traction because these books are going out. People are becoming aware. 
there's an awakening going on about co-governance and um, we're, we're getting unbelievable traction. I'm just off to the South Island to do about 20 meetings down there um, and the interest is huge. Um, you talk about the iwi mafia, but can I suggest to you an alternative, um, and you talked about Dr. Claudia Weiss. Now, just for people who don't know who Claudia Weiss is, she's not a councillor, she is a um, bureaucrat who works for uh, the Auckland City Council, I think. She's their director of customer and community services, and she is in control of the bookings there. Um, is is it really Maori um, or iwi, or is it an actual fact white liberals um, who are within, like for example, local government, who have decided um, because they're woke that they won't entertain any anti woke causes? Is is the problem greater than that? That, yeah. that it's not. Not the iwi. It's 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 the it's the white people like Claudia Weiss. Yeah, but white people, Michael. White people, the woke people, like Mr. Irons wears a, a bone around his neck, and um, you know he's he's as woke as you get. He's top shelf woke, and who's they're he? all influenced by iwi. They're, they're, who's yeah, who's who's who's, who's Mr. White? I mean, yeah. The, the guy with the bone around his neck is Mr. Irons, I O N S. He's the he's the yep, uh, but who's he? The top staff. He's the CEO of the Waikato District Council. Uh, Waikato District Council. Okay. Because hmm. I was talking about Claudia Vice. Anyway, they she, just they just they, yeah. they just cancelled out our meeting in Hamilton. Right. Okay. So to answer, um, to answer your question you're about booking, the relationship you're between booking public, you're booking public, you're booking, you're, you're booking, uh, yeah, but I mean, I, I, I actually don't, I don't agree with your analysis. I don't think the Iwi Mafia really give a rat's rat about you, Jolien, or your cause. Uh, they certainly have a different view, but I, and I, Nadi Kanunu, well, et cetera. But I, Michael, 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 you're misinformed. Haven't you been reading the papers? No, I'm not. I'm We've better had, informed than you are on that. The, the, no, Michael, you're not. You haven't got a clue. Head of the Ewe, head of the Ewe and the Hawks Bay coming down, out in the yeah. I know. I was just going to say. I said oh, you, you didn't hear me. I said accepting Nadi Kahanunu, which I I still ex that's exactly what I said in my preparatory remarks. I'm suggesting that the, they can't unbook or book council venues, Julian. Only council staff can do that. They can. Yeah, but everybody's under an influence. Exactly, and here's an example of that. So we have the Waikato Rupatu River Trust and Waikato District Council Co-Governance Joint Committee meeting. And we have Gavin Iron there. And we have Maori, 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 Maori and Maori. Um, because the consent won't have expired, but we would be, um, it wouldn't be wise use of money to upgrade um, Rahui Pokeka without knowing that it actually was going to meet future consent conditions. So we will have to do that first. Um, but we have started some discussions with Waikato Regional Council um, around the, I guess the whole, how we might approach this. So we have started that conversation and um, we absolutely recognize that uh, we, we will engage with Waikato Tainui and Mana Whenua. Yeah, no uh, influence there, Michael. The whole country is being influenced by, by Maori and by iwi, by elite Maori, the whole country. I'm not influenced. They're in everywhere. They're in, they're in local councils. They're in they're in um, schools. They're in um, the, the legal fraternity. That they're, they're now trying to get into real estate, putting real estate agents through an iwi course. Uh, councillors, when they first became councillors in, in in the last elections, were put through cultural safety lessons with people wearing body cams. Did you know that? Yeah, but that's not iwi. That isn't iwi leaders doing that. That's iwi. That is white woke bureaucrat. Yes, that's because they were asked Iwis to do that by white course, bureaucrats. Michael. You misidentify the oh, problem, Iwis Julian. Are running the course. Hang so, on a minute. Yes, but but Hang who who minute. pays for Iwis those courses? Were running the courses. 
the councils. And do you know how they intimidate the council members? They turn up at the council meetings and they have 20, 30, 40 Māori turning up, aggressively looking at how people vote and intimidating them. Yeah, I don't know what I don't know what um, planet you're living from, frankly, Julian, because that isn't. If you are elected as a councillor, you get people turning up all the time on any cause, from chopping down trees. You might get thirty or forty, uh, from yeah, stop maybe stopping a meeting somewhere to. I mean, it's just the nature of of these sorts of things. If you're intimidated by thirty people sitting, then you really aren't doing your job as an elected councillor, are you? What happens if they get up and do a haka and start, you know, creating a ruckus like they did on the Far North District Council? So what, yeah, but sorry, Julian, are you thinking that all local government people are morons? What, 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 what happens if the, if like Mr, um, Mr, um, the mayor at Kuipera, Craig Gibson, and he yeah. said, we're not going to have a, we're not going to have a karakir at the front of the, the, um, the you know, for, to start a council meeting. Next minute yeah. is, Hundreds of protesters outside outside the council. What do you call that? That's, that's called influence and pressure. And here it is. This is a council which it's full of people who are non-religious, uh, religious of different ethnicities, and I intend to run a secular council here, which respects everybody, and I will not be veering from that. Thank you. Yeah, can we have a... I don't agree with that. Sorry, you cannot interject. Can I have apologies, please? Excuse me, um, for those that um, do practice... Councillor um, Pettyora, you are not allowed to speak in this manner. And that led to this. What is this morning's hikoi about? Well, it's really quite simple. The purpose of today's hikoi is to inform all racists in this country that the doctrine of discovery is over. We will no longer tolerate ignorance or arrogance. That's the purpose of today. And if he doesn't get that message, step down. Yeah, again, Michael, no influence there. No pressure there. From Iwi. I don't call that Iwi Mafia. I call that... Um, Protests right. from people. Well, who... whatever. But it's but it's but it's an influence. You asked me who was influencing councillors, woke councillors. There you get there's your answer. Yeah, but, but I, 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 what I'm trying to suggest to you is that someone who holds the line, and in actual fact, Mayor Jepson did. Um, there are large numbers of councillors, elected councillors in New Zealand, who say no. Um, they they're not intimidated. I, what I'm suggesting to you is that they are trying to large to a large extent. And that is local government, particularly staff. That's how we started this conversation. They are woke. I'm suggesting to you they are your problem. They're not intimidated. They embrace uh, the idea that you should have your freedom of speech taken away from you. Yeah, and so do Maori elites. They are no different. They embrace that because they believe that anything contrary to their particular view, and it wouldn't matter if it was Maori or you know, um, COVID would be another one, Julian, or environmental or greeny concerns. What I'm suggesting to you is that but you can't they... isolate... Yeah, carry on. Where do they get their, their, their ideas from, Michael? Um, well, because that's why they work in local government. From? from universities, from media. From, Michael? But they don't yep. get and them from the iwi from mafia. The media and the universities. Who is influencing yeah. the media and the and the and the university? Oh, you've, the you've misidentified. Have you you've not, misidentified have you not this. The Fifty-five million dollar public interest journalism fund. Yeah, of course I have. And, have and, and you've misidentified. Have, you've misidentified have, again. Have you're misidentifying. You're misidentifying because it's white liberals who decided that this was a good cause and then brought those people in. It wasn't Maori intimidating. White liberals don't need to be intimidated. They're not intimidated. Woke people just embrace woke causes. That's why they're woke. Uh, and then they think poor okay, Maori. How do, you, how do you explain how do you explain how do you explain Mayor Jepson? Oh that's having, easy. Having hundreds of protesters turn up when he stops it when he stops the Maori prayer, what's that? What do you call that? But but, that, but, but I, I don't call that I, call that, I don't call that Iwi Mafia. On council yeah, members but, 
it's okay, a predominantly well, a or largely Maori thought. community. Yep, okay. Yeah, but uh, uh, if you continue, yes, but the problem that does is it, it suggests, well, I don't know. Let's, let's explore that a bit further. What about average Maori in this country? Do you think that they are being advantaged or disadvantaged by these sorts of antics? Average Maori New Zealand, there's some fantastic Maori in New Zealand, and most of them are, like 99.7% of Maori are wonderful. They're hardworking, they um, have good jobs, they pay taxes, they, they're, they're doing well. We're talking about the iwi elite, a very small number of iwi at the top of the tree mm. who are creaming it, and it's not trickling down to the rest of Maori around New Zealand. Mm. Okay. That's a different issue, though. Um, your, so the stop co-governance, what are you designed to do? Okay, let, let's go back one. Let's just wheel it back. You're trying to uh, stop co-governance would suggest that you don't want to see co-governance in anything, really, but particularly the three waters. That's fair enough. That's pretty mainstream. Um, no, no, no. What everything. else? Okay. What, are, what other areas would you see co-governance in apart from three waters at the moment? Separate health authority, separate police, giving all dock land back to Maori, giving Northland back to, to all, all state-owned land back to Maori and Northland. But that's part of um, treaty settlements, yeah? In the education system, hang on, that's not treaty settlements. That's not a treaty settlement. It's aside from a treaty settlement. What about the introduction of a, a, a politically his, um, tilted history curriculum going into schools to brainwash all the children? Yeah, again, I don't think... Yeah, okay, what about a separate, I accept what about a separate health... Of but, but these are... Okay, what what I'm just trying more? to suggest to you... Well, no, but what I guess I'm... Yeah, mm, I guess what I'm trying to do is, is, is say that the reason that all those things exist is because Maori were failing in the mainstream system. Now, that's their solution. I don't happen to agree with it either. But that's their solution, that Maori are failing in education, they're failing in the economy... They've at top of all the worst statistics and have been for oh, for as long as I've been in politics. Yeah, and that's largely because of left wing welfare that that has trapped many into a victimhood, the into believing they are victims. Uh, the solution, some think, is to, in actual fact, let Maori look after Maori, and the vain hope, I think, that things or statistics will improve, but. What are you what What are you going to do is to that uplift your own or what? View? Do, is that your own view? It depends. Is the simple answer on that Is that on your that own one. view? What's your own view? No, it, it depends. But it's, it's irrelevant what my view is. I'm interviewing you, and it's your view that's important. <laughs> wow, it's your view that's important. He said, "What? Well, it's taken him 18 minutes to get there. 18 minutes to get to that fact that people want to listen to Julian." and not you. And all I'm asking at the moment yeah, is, how would, you, how would you uplift Māori if you know that they are failing in almost every dimension of our economy and culture? I've written a 20-page report about that, and it has to do with the development of character. The, the problem with Māori being the getting the gold medal and the negative social indicators in everything is that throwing money at them and resources at them is not going to work. It never has worked. Look how much money has been given to Maori in the last 50 years. Just billions of billions of dollars. And have they got any better? No. The issue is, has to do with character. And it has, it's not just Maori, it's every single c uh, culture. If a person does not have character, and by character I mean a cluster of attributes like integrity, the ability to work hard, the ability to push through problems, the ability to be self-disciplined, to be honest, to have integrity, to um, to um, be able to plan, to be able to um, execute what you've planned, the ability to handle success and failure, the ability to be generous, the ability to have um, uh, a sense of um, being altruistic, living for other people. Those are a cluster of character uh, characteristics which I believe a, a lot of Maori don't have. And yeah, now Julian said a lot of Maori don't have. 
Now, a lot of is an unquantifiable number. It's not most. It's not all. It's unquantifiable. Now, listen to laws twisted around. It's causing, causing them to fail. It's not just for marriage. So, so let me, sorry, just, so can, can I, okay, can I, all? yeah, but well, can I just, can I just, you know, explore on this concept? So you're suggesting to me that Maori lack integrity, they lack self-worth, they lack honesty, they lack hard work principles, they lack altruism or looking after each other. In other words, as a race, as an ethnicity, they lack, they lack what you call character. No, he didn't say that at all. You're implying that he said all Maori, which he didn't. He said a lot of, a huge difference. I'm just going to fast forward to an interesting bit at the end. Thank you very much, Julian. Best of luck with you, and I hope you don't get closed out. No, no. Listen, I'm, I'm happy. Oh, listen, I'm happy to argue with you, but I'm not happy for you to be frozen out of a conversation. <laughs> I'm not happy for you to be frozen out of a conversation. He says. That's all he's done through the whole interview. He's frozen Julian out as much as he can. That was deliberate. Yeah, now folks, Michael Laws is a liberal masquerading as a free speech advocate. He's a hypocrite through and through. Anyway, folks, I've posted a link to Julian's event timetable below and will do so until the election.